Hey guys, today I'm going to be um, showing you all of my game hacking devices and just giving you a little bit of a backstory on any of them. So um, basically these are just going to be devices and stuff that I have bought solely for game hacking. So that does not include like SD cards or anything like that. Um, these, are all, these are basically things that are made basically only for hacking. With a couple exceptions, um, I know the elephant in the room is Cubic Ninja, but we'll get to that in a minute. So um, to start off, uh, these are in no particular order whatsoever, so I'm just going to start off and just go down the rows like that. And um, yeah, so that way you'll just get a little bit of an idea of like why I own some of these and all that. So let's just get started up with the Stargate 3DS. This uh, I've never even taken out of the box, actually. I was sent this to review once, but I um, never did the review. Um, I was never, like, told that I had to do one. They just kind of sent it, so I just figured, why not? Just So let's actually take this out of the box. I don't want to damage it or anything, so I'm going to be a little bit careful with it. But yeah, so there it is. Mint condition, Stargate. And um, that looks like a USB adapter or something like that. And yeah, so that's it. I don't have any backstory with this. I told you all I all I know about it. So um, let's just put this away, put it back where it is. And um, next, this is the R4 Revolution for the DS and for the 3DS. So this one I actually did use for a while. I put it back into the box in the same way it was, so it's basically mint. But um, I did use this for something. I don't remember exactly what, but it was definitely something 3DS related. And um, I think I bought it just to do like a video with it. So um, it basically paid for itself. But yeah, I still have it here anyway. And um, not much use to it. And uh, another thing, if anyone, if anyone want to like buy any of this stuff from me, just, you know, shoot a reasonable offer in the comments section and uh, maybe I could sell you some because... Like I, like this, like these two were already starting off. I don't have too much of a connection to many of these, so I'm perfectly fine with uh, selling some of them. So now let's move on to the R4S dongle. Um, this is a video that I did. I was also sent this as a review unit, and this one I actually did do the review on, which is surprising knowing me. But um, this one was actually interesting to review. Like, like you know my videos. Like I'm usually just straight to the point. And um, I don't I don't try and like hold you or lie to you or anything. So this was actually a good product to review, and I actually did genuinely enjoy using it. So I think this would be um, nice if anyone is looking for one. But yeah, so it's got the dongle in here. It's got the yeah the dongle and um, whatever that's called the jig and the micro USB cable. And um, yeah, it says R4S on the back of it. I have it. I think I have it in the wrong way, but no, that's fine. So um, actually, I'm just going to put this back like that. I'm not going to bother putting any of this stuff away. But yeah, next we've got another R4 Gold for the DS. Basically the same thing as this one. I think that I was also sent this one to review. And um, I just used it in a few videos. And I think I mentioned it a couple times in a few videos. I didn't actually do a dedicated review on it, though. But, um... Oh yeah, it must have fell, fallen out. There it is. So um, I don't I don't think I use this one that much. I might have used it like a couple times. But yeah, it's got the 2019 badge on it. So it'll focus, so you know it's a it's a recent card. Micro SD slot in there as always. Good condition. USB adapter. I think I actually did use this a few times when I lost my main one. So I I had to deal with one of these cheap Chinese adapters that transfer at like 200 kilobytes per second but yeah so um i think that just goes in there like that i'm not sure why it was on the wrong way but yeah so like i said i'm not gonna bother putting any of this back yet so yeah we've got almost done with the first row already so next this is um sx the sx dongle or whatever it's called um by team executor this one I actually did get did get my money's use out of it. I was sent um, a couple of these as review units. One of them I actually bought. I think I sold like the other two, but or gave them away or something. I think I yeah I gave one of them away to my friend and um, I sold another one. But 
this one I'm actually using and I think this was a this was a great purchase even though basically got like two of them for free but uh, we'll just open that up so yeah you see it's in there and um, we got the jig with it too high quality jig high quality device um, yeah so basically this was one of the first like hacking devices that was ever made for the Nintendo Switch. Um, it's it, it's not commonly used that much anymore. It's kind of like a gateway in the sense that like it was used for a while and then it just people just stopped using it because they realized that there was better options. But um, I still do think that SX um, alas and stuff is pretty good. It might not be the best, but um, that that's up to you to decide. But they're not too expensive anymore, so you can probably find one online for a decent price. And um, now we get on to the second row, and um, first thing you'll see is Cubic Ninja. So I bought this. I bought this for very cheap, about like ten bucks, maybe five, back um, when, like obviously the Ninja Hacks hype was before it started. I bought it um, like just as it was being announced because I knew I was definitely going to make a video on it. So this obviously paid for itself. Ninjax was a very big entry point. One of the first um, software entry points. And um, yeah, so we've got the game cartridge in here. But like um, as you saw with the case, basically mint condition. But, um, yeah, so, an inch hacks, this is, um, have a pretty long history with it. This was what really got me into the 3DS scene and, um, with the homebrew and stuff. I've made a lot of, uh, videos on, like, um, homebrew applications back when Ninch hacks was just, uh, getting into circulation. And, um, yeah, so Ninch hacks was a pretty big thing. I had a lot of fun with it. And that's why it's here, since I bought this solely for hacking. Although it is technically a game, there's probably a grand total of maybe seven people in the, in the world that have actually played the game, and um, everyone else just used it for hacking, and that's why it was so inflated recently, but um, it, it's gone down in price a bit, but it's still, if I did decide to sell it now, I could still make a decent profit off of it, but I'm just going to keep it just because of the history that I have with it, and um, I already made my money back with like the videos and stuff, so no need to really sell it. And um, next we got an R4i Revolution for the DS, another one of these, and another one of these. These are all slightly different. Like, um, I don't have I don't have two of the exact same things, but you can see um, they've got some similarities. Not much of history with this. I think I used this for, like, Seed Miner or something like that. I don't remember the exact use, but um, I had some use with this, and um, a friend sent me it. So, um, yeah. Next, uh, we've got a jig for the Nintendo Switch. This one I bought from someone on GBA Temp. I don't remember how much I paid for it, but it wasn't very much. And um, yeah, so this is what this is the first thing that I used when I started. I'm getting into like Switch stuff. So yeah, that really got me into it. And um, next, we get on to the biggest one, in my opinion. This is Gateway. So Gateway, I think I have the most memories with, and um, I got the most use out of this. Maybe maybe next to the Action Replay DS, but I, th I think Gateway might be pretty close. If we're just talking about personal use, I think Action Replay DSi is on top, but if we're talking about, like, you know, video use and um, basically just recent times, then Gateway basically took the cake. So when I open it up, give me just a minute here, you'll notice that the blue cartridge is missing. Let me do it. Yeah, there we go. So um, the blue cartridge is missing. That's because I sold it to a friend. But um, I still have the red one, which is all I need. A blue cartridge is basically just this, this, or this, rebranded into Gateway. That's, that's what it is. But yeah, so I still got the red cart. I got a lot of use out of this, and um, I still have a pretty unpopular opinion. I think that Gateway was um, on top for quite a while, even before Luma and stuff. A lot of people think that Luma just immediately took Gateway's place as soon as it came out, 
but for me and a lot of other cheat creators, Gateway had a far, far superior cheating system, and um, it helped us to find a lot of codes and stuff that, are, that we still use today. Back when um, Luma and NTR and stuff were coming into circulation, and everyone was saying that Gateway is dead now, Gateway was not dead for another couple years or so. Gateway didn't die until um, basically CTRPF came out, which came out in like 2018 or something. But until then, Gateway was the only practical way to find uh, memory addresses for games. Some even people that were lifelong Gateway haters, um, they came to buy it and um, they've said that they've definitely enjoyed it because it did have a superior cheat system to NTR. But um, once CTR plugin framework came out, I basically stopped using it completely. And um, it is sad because I did really enjoy Gateway, but I'm not just going to let the facts and like get in, get in the way of what I'm going to use. Obviously, CTRPF is better than Gateway at this point, but Gateway was far ahead of anything else. And any logical, decent person would say that, but it just basically the the main... The main storm of people on like GBA temp would say, throw away your gateway, do any of this, do that, if you had any kind of problems with gateway. There was absolutely no going to GBA temp for any kind of technical support with gateway. They would tell you to literally set it on fire and then just switch to Luma. Any of you guys that use GBA temp can back me up on that and you'll know that that's completely true. That's always what happened and that annoyed me so much. But now, I mean, it's not much of a big deal. And um, next, we've got Freaky Forms Deluxe. Basically, another version of Cubic Ninja, except this one was long and tedious installing the exploit. Um, I have a video on it. Um, if you ever watched that video that I have on my channel about it, you could tell like I was, I was not amused by this game whatsoever. Come on. Okay. Head. I. Oh my god. I don't care. Um, I was I was getting pretty <laughs> upset with it. Just because like it was so long and tedious to actually get to the point of the game where you get to install the exploit. But um, in the end, it was basically just another Cubic Ninja. And um, a, a way to install an entry point for the homebrew launcher onto your 3DS. So um, it was pretty cool. I don't have the box for it, sadly. When I bought it, it came in, like, some GameStop brand box or something. It was just black, and the box was completely falling apart. I, I shit you not, like, it was completely falling apart. There was stuff, t like, ripping off of it. The plastic was peeling. I didn't even know a box could get in such bad condition. But, yeah, so I just threw that away, just kept the cartridge and moved on. And um, next, this is a device probably a lot of you didn't even know existed. This is the action replay for the Wii. Uh, when I had a friend, when I had like some friends come over, like a lot of them didn't even know that um, this device actually existed. I, I believe I still have the. I, I believe I still have the um, box for it. It's just over here somewhere, and I'm not gonna go get it. But um, I should still have the box for it. And this is what ultimately got me into hacking uh, the Wii. So basically what this is, is it's kind of, it's kind of like um, a paid version of letter bomb hacks or whatever the hell that was called. But um, if I can get this back in, you know what, I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm not going to try and do that with one hand. But so basically what this was, was you just put it in your Wii and um, the letter bomb thing that like immediately came up if i remember i might be a little bit off but i believe like the letter bomb immediately came up in your messages and all you had to do was click on it and um you were able to hack on games and stuff so um, that was that was pretty cool it was easy to use and that's what really got me started with um, hacking on the wii and um you could also edit the codes there was like an xml that you had to edit there was no like editor or anything but I did kind of get that to work a little bit. It was not the easiest thing I've ever done, but considering I was only like 11 or 12 at the time, like trying to edit like an XML and get the formatting exactly correct, it was not the easiest thing. But yeah, I was able to put some codes that people made like from YouTube and stuff on here. But um, yeah, there was no way to actually make codes with this, but it was just mostly for people that wanted to use them. 
But if you did want to make codes, however, for the Wii, what they did have was the USB Gecko. So I didn't get that much use out of this, actually, because I didn't know how to fully use it at the time. But yeah, this is a USB Gecko, like some off-brand one. I bought this a while back, and um, I used it a bit, but didn't get as much use as I would have liked out of it. Definitely not as much use as, like, Gateway or something, but this is this was, like, the... The best, the best way to make codes on the Wii, and like the only way really to make codes on the Wii, unless you just like guessed random values or something and just edited random addresses. That's what some people did. That's actually what I did too, like when I was young, but this was like the only way to like actually make codes. I didn't get as much use, use, use as I would like, like I said, but you know, we still have it anyway. And um, next we move on to power saves for the 3DS. I still have the cable, it's just in like a big bin with a whole bunch of cables. I found this one immediately because I knew that I had this on it. But this one, the cable's just somewhere in there and I don't feel like finding it. But yeah, so this is like the first thing that I ever bought for the 3DS in terms of like hacking. It's not really hacking, all it did was just edit the save files. But that was a lot more than we had back then like we had no way of doing that via software or anything so this was like the only way that you could actually do it basically what you did was you just um stuck a cartridge in here and um just plugged it into your pc via usb and um you could edit the save file you could inject like codes and stuff and yeah so this is a daytel product kind of like the action replay so um, I, I wasn't expecting it to be like this simple. I was expecting you to at least be able to like edit values yourself and stuff. But all it was was um, you could just use pre-made codes and stuff that they had set up. You couldn't actually like put your own value or anything like that. Like if you wanted to have 99 lives, then um, if they only had a 20 lives code or something, then all you could do is put 20. You couldn't edit yourself and put 99 or something like that. That's just an example, but you know what I mean, like... It was pretty closed down, but it was still something. And um, next we move on to the Action Replay DSi. So like I was uh, hinting at a little bit before, I think this is what I got the most use out of, out of any of these um, items on here. Uh, this is the first hacking device I ever bought, and um, it's still holding up to this day. No problems with it. Only problems with the cable, but um, no problems with this actually. So I bought this because my friend had one, and um, it was pretty cool. Like, you could um, hack Mario Kart DS and stuff, which is what I did. And um, I ended up kind of making my own codes. Unlike with um, Power Saves, although this came much later, with this you could actually input your own codes, you could edit them, and do all that. So it, it works kind of similarly. What you do is you put the game cartridge in the back, and then you just stick the black part of the bottom into the DS, just like a normal game. And a menu would come up when you loaded the game, and that would um, let you activate codes and stuff. So on this cable, it's not in the best condition. It, um, I don't know why I had the plastic there. I think I think because like if you bend it a certain way, it like doesn't register or something like that. But um, not not the best condition, but it still gets the job done, and it's still the original cable from like 2008. So. Yeah, that was, that was pretty cool. Um, I definitely got my money's worth out of that. This is what led me into buying all of these and led me into probably going into college to become a software engineer. That's what I'm doing now. So I think without this, my life would be completely different. I wouldn't even be here right now. So um, yeah, this definitely is one of my favorite devices that I have here, hands down. And um, next we move on to these. These are just the NTAG 215 cards. But these are not really a hacking device, but I put them on here anyway since the only reason I bought them was solely for hacking, kind of like with Cuban Ninja and Freaky Forms. But with these, um, what you do is you can use an Android phone or something to write to these. And then if you uh, stick these on top of your 3DS or on top of your Switch or something, um, it'll register as whatever Amiibo that you set it to. So instead of buying an Amiibo from the store, I've never actually bought one, so I don't know how much they cost, but I'm assuming like 20 bucks or something. So you never had to buy an Amiibo. I bought all of these for like $1. 
Like, there's 15 of them here. I bought them all for, like, one buck. So that's, like, le that's less than 10 cents for each of those. And I was able to make 15 Amiibos out of them. So, yeah, definitely a great investment if you don't really have many Morgals and don't really care about actually paying for stuff. But, yeah, so really good investment on these if you want to um, get the perks and advantages of buying Amiibos without actually buying Amiibos. So yeah, I think that kind of wraps up all my hacking devices. I might have a few more, but um, these are all the main ones. And like I said, I'm not mentioning like SD cards or anything. I do have um, my Wii U right here, and um, this is my SD card that I got for it. 64 gigabytes extreme. Um, definitely good SD card for the Wii U. And um, obviously I've got one in my Wii 2 over there. Um, GameCube, just a memory card in there, nothing, nothing, um, hacking related or anything, but, yeah, so th that's all of them, basically, I don't think I have any more if I do, um, I might just post it in the description, but that's all I got for now, so um, if you have any questions or anything about any of these, if you're interested in buying any of them, then just feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll get back to you if I'm interested in that. But yeah, so thank you guys for watching. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that. And I'll see you next time.